Hi y'all, welcome to my shop. Uh, turning spheres can be a lot of, lot of fun, it's not a difficult project, but before you get started you got to have a couple of accessories to be able to hold it in between, between centers. So today I want to show you how you can make these little cup chucks. Now using a scrap out of my spindle box, spindle scrap box with tenons on it, you've got one of those right, similar to this. Always save these these scraps have got a tenon on it because you can use them for as a jam chuck or friction chuck or something similar to this. This uh, got some texturing on it, so I can tell it was I was either practicing or I used it in a texturing demonstration. I'm going to part, and it's hollowed out some, so I'm going to go ahead and and part that off right about at the edge there. Use the back of this off a little bit. Use a thin eighth inch parting tool, but. back and forth so it doesn't bind. Whoa, that was exciting. So get rid of that little nub in the middle. Just kind of make a little bit of a divot here for a drill bit. I use a skew. There we go. Slow this down a little bit. And I'm just going to use this hand drill, make it a little easier to get rid of that wood in the middle. So, we got this set, set for an inch and a half. I'm going to go ahead and mark that. We're only going to touch it on this left hand side and then we're going to look for that mark on the other side and adjust it accordingly. And there we are. So now typically the way we're going to hollow this, this out, same way you're going to do a box, you're going to come in here from the center and drop this tool rest just a little bit. With your spindle, guys, I'm going to get the speed up to, oh, maybe 13, 1400. We're just going to come in here with it, the flute pointed somewhere, oh, maybe 10, 30, 11 o'clock. And just cut it with kind of the tip, the scraping cut, and sweep it out. So I'm going to use a box scraper, come in here, and it doesn't have to be parallel walls. I'm going to have, actually have it slope just a little bit. There we go. We're going to just chamfer the inside like that. An inch thick. And we're done with that. Now let's go on to the one for the tailstock. So let me show you how we're going to make a tailstock cup for the live center. You know there's two basic uh, live centers. You've got one that's threaded like this such as the one by one way or the Pyromatic or or Robust and this is probably the simplest one to make because we're basically going to drill a three quarter inch hole maybe put a little shoulder on it for here. The other one we're going to use an original equipment uh, a very common type of drive center such as this one with my Laguna and we're going to fit that one. So let's start with this one first. So I picked up a spindle scrap two inches by three inches. Uh, I don't know what it was used for. We're going to go ahead and face that thing off. So we're just going to start with parting it off. Next, we want to be able to put this in a chuck for reverse chucking it. So I want to go ahead and put a bit of a tenon on it. I can see with the tenon I've got, it's a pretty fair size gap, so I can tell from the size of this, I didn't need to come down a little bit more than that. So we're just going to come in there like this. And that should do it. Now we're going to go ahead and, and drill a three quarter inch hole. So I take a three quarter inch Forstner bit, put it in my uh, Jacobs Jacob's chuck, tighten it up, put it in my tail stock. Now, how deep do we want to go? Well, let's take our take our live center. I could measure this, but I'm just going to mark it with a like this. Have that shoulder halfway down this, and I'm going to assume this little point will go in the little bit of uh, indentation made by this Forstner bit, or it'll be pretty close. It's, 
This isn't rocket surgery. This scrap's not even round. It's a little flat on one side, but that's okay. Uh, just a hair under an inch. I come over here and I need to probably... Well, I use, I'll just use the markings on, on my tail stock. So I'm going to start at a half an inch. We're going to drill down almost an inch. We're going to slow the speed down a little bit. Turn this on. And get the speed up to, oh, no more than about 750. Holding on with my, uh, my hand onto the uh, Jacob's chuck. When you pull it out, you want to make sure. Alright, half inch. And go an inch and a half. And there we go. Using these measurements sometimes is faster than putting a little piece of tape on it. And I'm going to measure just how wide the shoulder is on here because I think I want this to go down in there just a little bit to give me a little more stability. And it's just a little under an inch. I suppose one way to do that would be to take a, another Forstner bit. I wouldn't even have to much worry about measuring it. As a matter of fact, I think that's probably the way I'm going to I've got a one inch drill bit. That's probably that's probably going to be close enough. We're not really talking about gross precision here. Uh, this is a little bit larger than I would like um, for that shoulder, but that's okay. And I'm just only going to go down no more than a uh, eighth of an inch. So when I engage, that took care of that. Now, let's see how close a match that we have. And that's good. I mean, it, it, it's got a little slop to it, but that's okay. Now, we're going to go ahead and reverse this. Let me get this, get this drill bit out of here. So, I'm going to take that tenon, reverse this thing. Now, we're going to... Go ahead and open that up uh, by, by drilling. We're going to use an appropriate size Forstner bit, and that really kind of depends on the size of the um, spheres you're going to use. Somewhere, I think, between a, uh, one and a half inches and one and five eighths. Actually, I think I'm going to go down to a one and a half. I think one and five eighths might be a little large. Now, it's not critical how deep I'm, I'm going to go, but I think about the width of that Forstner bit probably will give me plenty of, plenty of room, so we're going to turn that on. Now, if you don't have an appropriate size Forstner bit, you can always... to use my pyramid or point tool. I've got a video on, on this, making this tool. This works great. Now let me show you for how we're going to do one of these tailstock cup centers for, for an original uh, OEM manufacturer that's got a kind of long, um, long side to it and, and, and a short point. I've got this spindle scrap that uh, out of my box that uh, looked like it might have been used for a texturing demo and it's been hollowed a little bit so I'm going to just part it off somewhere along there. Uh, since I've already got a hole I don't need to drill anything for a starter hole so we're going to uh, inch and a half will just about be right on the money. So to hollow this out, I guess I need to think about how how deep I need to deep I need to hollow, hollow it. And I think the easiest way to keep up with that basically is use some sort of depth gauge that sets at the depth that I want. Like this. And then I'll know when I'm there by just using this to trial fit. Just short of that part. I'll 
fine tune that with a scraper. Now, using a some type of square end scraper, in this case I'm going to use a box scraper, I'm going to go ahead and start trying to have, get nice parallel walls. Before I worry about getting too deep, I'm going to do a trial check. And it's a good thing because that's just about right on the money. Alright, let's look at these in operation. We're going to take our cup chuck that, that goes into the spindle. Tighten it up. Then we're going to take the cup chuck that slides over our original live center that came with this, this Laguna. I'm going to take a previously roughed out uh, spear and I'm going to put it in between centers. And I've got a center line marked here. And okay, and there's our there's our sphere. I could uh, I could sand it, but it's just about where I want it to be. These cup chucks work just fine. I've turned a lot of spheres over the years and made a number of different type of uh, between center uh, fittings to, to to hold the sphere between centers. Generally, I made them in the past that were contoured. Uh, I found that they do work better if you line them with a little bit of either fun form or leather. Leather holds up a little bit better. But what I found, uh, if you make them too small, uh, they don't hold very well and they can actually pop out, or the, the spear can pop out at, out of it because they're not always perfectly round when you're, when you're uh, finishing between, between centers. Uh, so what I found that actually works better for me, uh, you know, the, the ones that are, you make for a chuck are the easiest. Of course, you could, if you don't have a chuck, you can make one of these things with a um, Morse taper uh, to fit. But in terms of the shape, I've found that the shape that works best for me is one that is more of a square shaped. Like, like this one for the tail center, or uh, this one this one for a tail center, this one for, for a chuck. I found that trying to do one that's contoured is very tricky. Now this works great if you make a little base, uh, you know, and it could spin if, if it's a fairly shallow contour, but that's not accurate enough to hold it between centers because it'll wobble on you, and it depends on um, what size spheres you're making to size it. Uh, the contour becomes very important to getting it fairly accurate so it will hold it snug, whereas the square ones give you just a lot more a lot more forgiveness. Let me see if I can't illustrate that for you a little bit better. We've got it concave. When you come in here with this, you may not get it exactly exactly right. So the challenge is getting is getting that profile to exactly match. And if the profile doesn't match, you're only going to get it rubbing on one spot, and that's that's not going to work. Uh, that's with a smaller sphere. You get a slightly larger sphere, and you might get a little larger spot, but it's still not going to be right. But if you've got one that with pretty square walls. It will accommodate a bit, it rubbing on the outside walls for the most stability on the larger one. And it will also accommodate uh, smaller ones and still, you know, still anchor it on the outside. Okay, I hope this video is useful for you. Uh, if you're interested in watching a, a longer video on actually how to, how to make a uh, cut a sphere without a jig, you might want to you might want to watch this one or if you're interested in turning one with a jig watch this other one y'all stay safe come on back here